Welcome back to the Papa Meat Channel. How you doing? How you doing? Come on in and sit on down because today we're diving back into Goosebumps. Oh, you know I love me some Goosebumps episodes. And coincidentally, we're talking about the Goosebumps uh, icon himself, Slappy. Who's that guy? The dummy. The, you know, the big one back in the day. And you know, what's weird is that I believe that in the book series, there's three. There's three Slappy books. Could be more. From what I remember, it was three. Night of the Living Dummy 1, Night of the Living Dummy 2, and Night of the Living Dummy 3. That's hard to say fast. That's hard for me to say in general. When I was younger, I had Night of the Living Dummy 3 on VHS. And this was one of the ones where it was one of the Goosebumps specials where Arl Stein comes out at the beginning. Hello, I'm Arl Stein. And it was sick and this scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. I used to have a friend that would come over and I'd put this on. He'd be like, I want to go home. And I'd be like, pussy, can't sit through Night of the Living Dummy 2 or 3. What are you, an idiot? Today I wanted to talk about this staple one because we've talked about Stay Out of the Basement, we've talked about Werewolf Fever Swamp, we've done our own little tier list before, but I just want to dive into this one because when re-watching it, it's a pretty funny one. And also it stars Hayden Christensen. You can see the effects of the acting. I don't like sand. I hate dummies. You could smell the Star Wars kind of oozing out of him. Does anyone remember the movie Jumper? I do. No you don't, dude. It's one of my favorites, Hayden Christensen. Oh, what a hunk. Your, one of your favorite movies is Jumper? Yeah. What, what's wrong with that? Yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. All I know is that this is some grade A goosebumps. They also did Night Living Dummy 2 as a single episode. So Night Living Dummy 3 is, it's, it's broken up into two episodes. And this is just one episode. And then they never even f***ed with the first one. If you're wondering what they did with the first one, I have no idea. I have to look on the internet. Um, actually... Because this video is going to be about Night of the Living Dummy 3, but I'll just go over Night of the Living Dummy 2 real quick. This one. It's very, very, very fast. And I want to say that I think that the Slappy Dummy, I think it looks rad. Night of the Living Dummy it has, like, elements of... There's that Twilight Zone episode that people say Arl Stein ripped off. Whatever. There's also Child's Play. You stupid bitch! You I mean, like, the idea that, like, dolls or things come to life and plague people is fine. But the way that they go about it in Goosebumps is, like, you read Latin on a card and it, like, brings this dummy to life. It's so fucking weird. And what I love about Night of the Living Dummy 2 is that since it's one episode, they really have to, like, get going and finish it. So pretty much we follow a girl named Amy, and I'm pretty sure her family's Mormon. They're doing a talent show. Her talent is ventriloquism. No worse, termites. You've heard of the Terminator. Well, we had to call it the X-Terminator. The younger the ventriloquist, the creepier and more psychopathic, okay? Can we, can we all agree with that? If there's any people in my comment section that say that they're ventriloquists, I don't know what I'm supposed to tell you. The whole thing is that she is a ventriloquist, and if, if you're that young and you're into puppets and stuff, it just feels odd to me. Whenever you're able, if you're just like, I want to be a ventriloquist when, you're, when I'm older, to me, I'm like, I don't know. Which I like practical effects. I think practical effects in movies are still king, but still with me, I'm like, I don't know. Ventriloquist, I, I don't think it, it doesn't, it just doesn't flow with me right. Yeah, I hate puppets. They're dumb. They don't look very good on screen. I don't agree with anything he just said, but that's, that's just, <laughs> that's just me. The puppet, his it, head ejects off. And the dad's like, well, Amy, I bought you a new puppet. And it's slappy. And she, she grabs it and immediately just reads the Latin on the card. Caro, Mary, Donna, Roma, Molino, Carano? As a kid, would you not just be like, what language is this? What is this? What the hell is on this card? And she just grabs it and she's like, oh, ba -la -la -ba -la -ba -la -ba -ba. and immediately Slappy just starts coming to life and terrorizing the family. But the only really discernible thing I remember about Night of Living Dummy 2 is that the amount of talent shows they show in the episode with this family. And there is a pretty funny where Slappy roasts the family and the Mormons are just like, what the hell, Amy? What's the, what's going on? And she's like, it's not me. And it's like so clearly not her voice. And how about that mother of yours? She went to a store and asked the clerk if he had anything her size and he told her to try the freight elevator. Amy, that's not very nice. But it's not me, it's him. But pretty much the whole episode accumulates to find out very quickly that the people believe her that the dummy is alive, right? It starts terrorizing the kids. They run around. It accumulates to an ending when Amy finds out that, oh, I can just overpower the dummy because I'm a living being and this is a wooden puppet. Slappy gets thrown against a wall and his face explodes and he queefs out some green dust. It turns out that like their regular, their, their, her puppet before did it and he has like a goofy voice. 
Yep. He's like, Gorsh, well, I guess that we're you. You're fing dead. You're, you're gonna die. Today's video is sponsored by Z Biotics. Let me tell you, if there's a surefire way to wake up very refreshed after a night of drinking, it's with Z Biotics. Z Biotics pre alcohol probiotic drink is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works when you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Z Biotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Oh, what? That's awesome! But just remember to make Z-Biotics your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly, and you'll feel your best tomorrow. Which, I'll be honest, I was on the fence about Z-Biotics at first, okay? But I brought some friends over. Drinks were flowing. But thank God I reached for Z-Biotics first, and I woke up the next morning, and I felt great. Try it for yourself, and go to zbiotics.com slash papameat to get 15% off your first order when you use papameat at checkout. Z-Biotics is backed with 100% money-back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied, Satisfied for any reason, the refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash papameat and use the code papameat at checkout for 15% off. Thank you to zbiotics for sponsoring this video and back to the video. Not a living dummy three, it really steps up the fucking bar. All new characters, it follows our protagonist Trina, Daniel, and their cousin Zane, which yes, Hayden Christensen is Zane. So there you go, it's pretty good, but it opens with Arl Stein talking to a dummy of himself, and it's unsettling. They even get the mole right and everything. Hello, I'm Arl Stein. I write the Goosebumps books. I love the Arl Stein intros. It's like a f***ing big nostalgia blanket that's just draped over my fat body. It feels so right, and it feels like, I, I, like I'm just a, a little child again. It's amazing. The story begins. And the episode starts with the girl sleeping as a man drags a giant box up the stairs. There's some, like a, some nice little creepy wind chime shots here. But I mean, to be fair, they set up the nice, it's a nice framing of a man just dragging a big box up some stairs. Which, you know, we've seen the box before in Night of the Living Dummy 2. We know that it's Slappy's box, but still as a kid, it felt like it's a bit frightening. It's a bit scary, especially to be, to put yourself in the shoes of, of the girl and she's just waking up like, what is that sound? What is, what's happening? And the girl goes and investigates the attic and she pulls the sheet off to reveal a dumb looking dummy. I would use an R word, not a hard R. I would just use an R word. She basically is like going around. She's like, Daniel, I know it's you. Just stop it, okay? And then her brother comes up and just says a pretty good line. I heard someone talking up here, so I decided to come up and check it out. What's going on? I'm your brother, Daniel. I heard some bumping in the hallway. Was that you? She's like, wait, if you're here, then what's... And it ends up being their dad pops okay. out from the back. And you find out that the dad's a ventriloquist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can still do it. Can I throw my voice or what? I think that the dad has to be the smallest actor alive. I thought Elijah Wood was small. This man is like, is, is petite, is how I would say. But the dad is a bow tie wearing ventriloquist. I was like, how the f did this guy get pussy and have a couple kids? How did this happen? The dad then pulls out Slappy and glues his eye back on because his face is still broken in from Night of the Living 2. As he's gluing it, he tells them that cousin Zane is coming over. Zane? Is that a real name? Zane Malik from One Direction. Oh, the One Direction dude. I forgot. Okay, I forgot about that. Daniel and Trina basically bully the shit out of Zane all the time to an excessive degree. And they're like, oh, yeah, we have to deal with our big pussy cousin Zane. I f***ing hate when he comes over, dude. And they pranked him by taking, moving his bed outside and putting him by a cow and that, like, scarred him for life. Which, even as a kid, I was just like, would I, would I be that mad? I mean, like, the inconvenience of having to, like, walk up to the house, but I'm like, it's not like the f***ing cow's gonna bite you or anything. It will, it will do nothing. So I don't know, I kind of wish that they would like, I don't know, they made him like piss his pants or something like that, made him shit himself. Trina then sees that there's like a little note on the on the chair. She reads the Latin again and then Slappy's face like jolts off. Like it's obviously they have a wire and they just like pull the wire off and off. The dad's like, what the hell? What is this? Well, needless to say, they don't really give a shit about it. The dad plops the face back on with the glue and they all head downstairs all happy, knowing that everything's safe and fine. It was just their creepy ventriloquist dad in the attic messing around and purchasing and bringing home a puppet at three in the morning? Where did he get the puppet? I was just going out shopping. I, I would definitely be like, are you cheating on mom? Or, 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 or we're not gonna have to live in separate homes, are we? Where the f do you buy a ventriloquist dummy at three in the morning? I don't know. The black market. <laughs> the black market. <laughs>
Kids, don't worry. I bought this puppet on the black market. Wouldn't you also be, I'd be like, why is the puppet on the black market? Well, thank God it comes with this Latin spell card that I should probably read out loud. But as they're heading downstairs, Slappy's face magically seals shut. And I remember as a kid, I was like, I don't know if it like, if my autistic monkey brain basically got scratched or what, but I remember I used to like rewind the part with the glowing green going around and sealing up his face. I thought it was very satisfying. I was becoming an HGTV viewer right then and there. I was like, look at him get fixed in such elegance and style. We cut back to the morning and Trina's coming down. She's looking all fucking pissed off. And she, it's kind of funny because she sits down at the table and she's like, Daniel, will you hand me the cereal? Daniel. And it's like over the cereal, you can see a plaster head of red hair. Is that what you think your the top of your brother's head looks like? Hello? And she moves the box and oh, it's Slappy. And then the dad and brother come in, but the dad does like a really like millennial core kind of like cringy, like we thought that you might want a friend for breakfast. We thought you'd like some company at breakfast. <laughs> And they're like prank, playing a joke on her. I just have to once again reiterate the size difference between the mom and the dad. It's staggering. I really would love to see that f situation. Like I wish there was a Pornhub video of them fucking just so I could see how it's simply done because it's that fascinating. It wouldn't even be for pleasure, Nick. It would be for, it would be like Nat Geo. It'd be for learning. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Not you once, little f off. Oh. Shut up. So she sees Slappy there. And Trina's like, oh, Dad, you glued his eye on perfectly. It is a seamless, seamless fix. If I was a kid, I'd be like, how did you magically put that back on his face? But it, I, I just thought that even as a kid, I was like, well, put his face back on perfectly. And people are just like, hey, good job. You did a good job of gluing him back. As if like, I don't know, he folded laundry or did something like that minute. I'd be like, that is, that is impressive. Then the dad, of course, he's cutting some bread. He does, ow, oh, oh. And we zoom in on Slappy's uh, maniacal face and then the dad does like a nice thumb trick. This is the second practical joke and it's 7.45 in the morning. I would be exhausted. Luckily, Zane arrives and spices up the whole situation. He arrives and uh, basically he's talking to his dad. He's just like, If you wanted to torture me, couldn't you just find something a bit more humane? If you wanted to torture me, why, did you, why don't you just send me to Guantanamo Bay and have them break my thumbs? Why don't you whip my back, dad? I would rather have you whip my back until I bled raw. The, the casting of Zane's dad could not have been more perfect. That's what dads need to look like in movies. I'm tired of all these sexy twink dads where everybody just wants to f the dad the whole time, like a Pedro Pascal kind of guy. Give me that guy as the dad, dude. And we get a really awkward interaction between Zane and Daniel and Trina, and they have like a, a really awkward small talk. So. 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 And you can just tell the kids don't like each other. Grabs his, uh, his camera, he says, oh, did you know I'm a photographer now? He's taking pictures of Trina, but it's like, it's just like really weird, cringy lines. Like, you're happening, you're here, look at you. Oh, beautiful, you're happening, you're here. Oh, great stuff. Like kind of like New York fashion talk, and he's snapping pictures of him. I can't tell why they did that for this child to say that. The 90s were a crazy time. Daniel sees Zane has a book oh, that says, Conquering Your Fears. And Daniel starts to mock him because apparently, uh, I, I love child cruelty in, in media. Zane is holding onto a book just titled Conquering Your Fears and Daniel's just like, oh my God, what are you afraid? Pussy of what? And then to ease his fears of dummies because he's like, oh, oh my God, a, a puppet. And you can tell that Zane's a skittish kid, right? The dad's like, oh, well here, let me show you some of this stuff about the like puppets and you'll get used to them. And Zane's like, oh, okay. And the dad just like takes Slappy and just starts making fun of him. Uh, his name is Zane. Well, I guess that's better than being Insane. <laughs> and the whole family is laughing at him. I'm like, this is exactly why he was perfectly fit to be a mass murderer as Darth Vader. This is this this should have been Anakin's arc. Is is getting completely belittled by this Canadian family. But we cut to the night and Zane's spazzing out. Everyone's wondering what the going on. He comes in and he starts beating a basically like a puppet wearing like a hockey mask, kind of Friday the Thirteenth style, hitting it. And the amount of feathers in the room. I mean, it's a he's basically blowing a metaphorical. Whistle. I mean, he's like, St help me, help me, he's gonna get me, he's gonna get me! Help me, no, no, help me, help me, no! <laughs> Even I was like, God damn, someone help this kid. Trina comes down and the family's like, what the hell? And it kind of seems like the kids are playing a prank on Zane. And then they're like, wow, why the f did Daniel do this? But even Daniel comes in and he's like, oh, snow, cool. Hey, cool, snow, all right. You find out that the puppet in the room is their dad's puppet, Rocky, and it's like a mob 
looking like an Al Capone era mobster. Zane's like, oh, they hate me, they hate me. They hate me. And it's like, no shit, dude, you're annoying as You come in and you have a conquering your first book in your waistband, you're taking pictures like a New York photographer, of course. Why would these kids vibe with that? The dad tells his wife Patty to give Zane some ice cream and the other two kids are gonna be being punished. They have to clean up the room. Now Daniel and Trina are just like, they're a little betrayed by each other. Well, I wish you wouldn't have done that because now we're both in trouble. We, we don't know who did it exactly yet. We haven't been revealed that. It's very Alfred Hitchcock-esque, I would say. You show the bomb under the table, who's gonna ignite it? Which movie's that? No, it's not like a movie. It's just, it's, it's oh. a thing. It's a situation that he had, you know? It's oh. like, it's all about suspense and tension. You want to rise the tension. It's better to see a bomb under a table and know that there's pe the people that are at the table don't know it's there. It's a classic thing from film school. Yeah. What movie? Okay, well, it, it's not a, I'm just gonna keep going. We cut to the morning and they confront Zane and he pretty much is just like, huh, huh well, it, it actually was a pretty funny joke. In a twisted sort of way. I'm gonna show you how I process my pictures. I took some pussy pics of your mom, Aunt Patty. You guys wanna come see? And the kids are like, yeah, I wanna see mom's beef. So they go upstairs and they start developing the pictures. And as he's developing the pictures, it's like the photos he was taking outside, but then there's like puppet versions of it. So this little motherfucker can't catch a break. And he's like, why are you doing this? And he just like, he like runs downstairs again. Like the dad's like, I know what's gonna help this kid. I'm gonna show him the puppet again that I belittled him with earlier. Uh, the mom's like, are you sure about this? And this, the size difference between these two people is unbelievable. I can't get past it. It's a roadblock, I swear to God. He starts talking to him and Slappy kicks Zane. He kicked me. And even the dad's just like, what are you talking about? This kid's a psycho. He gets kicked by Slappy and it's like, even the dad's like, well, I didn't do that. So I think you're being a little over dramatic. I feel like I would like probably pull my kids over to the side and be like, my, he's a bit of a He's only here for like two days. Don't even look at him. Look at the ground. When you walk by him, just look at the ground. I'm gonna have my kids get re-indoctored into society or like, you know, have to deal with troubled people. If you see somebody who's different than you, look to the ground and don't look at them. <laughs> it's funny too, because Aunt Patty's like, what are you doing? Exactly, the, the Aunt Patty, she's just like, why would you do that? And the dad's like, what are you What are you talking about? She's like, well, why don't we just have dinner? A nice, I made this dinner. And you go into the dinner and she's, it's like all trashed by dummies. Oh no! The mom and dad are livid because I think Daniel and Trina did it. Zane keeps doing this thing where he like runs away and screams every time. And it's it's the same kind of frequency and pitch each time. And it, it almost feels like they did it in post-production. It's always like, Wah! No. <laughs> Which the dad then is just like, well, I don't think that you guys are gonna go to summer camp because you guys are being nuisances. And they're like, that's not fair, dad. It's bullshit. He's like, whatever. He's, they're, they're, they're getting the ultimate punishment by not being able to go to summer camp because it's the 90s and that's all you have. Cut to night and the sister is sleeping. She hears something and goes upstairs to find Daniel hiding behind a couch. And they start sitting there and they're like, he's like, I knew it, you did it. And she's like, no, I knew you did it. And they're both sitting there talking to each other. And then Zane comes upstairs and he's just like saying his whole plan out loud. I think we'll put you in the shower and uh, we'll hang you outside my bedroom window. <laughs> After this trip, Trina and Daniel will never mess with me again. I can't believe people thought I was afraid of this stuff. And they thought I was afraid of you? No one's gonna mess with me again. I am actually not afraid. I have been doing these plans. You, everybody is stupid and I am Zane. Trina does like a really cringy, even as a kid, I used to cringe really hard because she does. Zane's been a naughty boy. Looks like Zane's been a naughty boy. Uh, what? I used to hate that shit, drive me insane but you pretty much find out that Zane has been faking this the whole time it's a good twist I'll be honest it's a good character twist you think he's a pussy turns out he's the guy doing it the whole time even as a kid I was like is it slappy doing this you know what I mean but no it ends up being Zane and they run downstairs and they're gonna go tell their parents and he's like no come on guys please please and as they do that we get our first problem we have slappy walk towards him. he's like ah so you want to be a wise guy Zane but it's just very, either a child or a little person in a very bad mask that does not match the puppet that well. And also, I couldn't un unsee it as well, is that it's even human hands, but they're just doing this the whole time. So he's like, so you want to be a wise guy, Zane? So you want to be a wise guy? <laughs> and you know the editing is going to be, it's going to get real wonky really fast. 
You can also see his face under the mask. You, yeah, I forgot about that. You can't actually kind of see his face under the mask. It's like, it just looks so, you look, see part of their bottom lip and their tongue. It's, but the eyes like don't blink and they're really flat. Like at least with this one, there's some dimension, right? His forehead has the nice, it's, it's three dimensional. This one, it's like very clearly just like a straight ahead thing and his eyes are just like wide open. Slappy pretty much breathes some green queef smoke into Rocky. And we're, I guess it assumes that he's like gonna possess him or something. Uh, because he comes to life and he's like, are you ready to have some fun? And then Rocky sounds like kind of like he has some kind of mental illness or that he was hit in the head with a shovel as, a, uh, as like a, a young, as a youth. He says, yeah, sure, boss. Yeah. Are you ready to have some real fun? Sure, sure. Whatever you say, boss. But the next morning, Zane is mowing the lawn. You can tell he's being punished. Trina and Daniel come out with some nice big glasses of lemonade to rejoice in their victory last night. And Zane's pretty much like, your parents probably hate me. Suppose your mom and dad hate me just as much as you guys do now, don't they? And they're like, yeah, Zane. They're gonna beat the shit out of you tonight. No, I'm kidding. They are like, no, they don't hate you. They're just surprised that you did that. They have some camaraderie out in the yard about how they, they tricked each other and they're gonna become friends now. And even the parents see it. And the little munchkin dad's just like, can I eat your, the, your pussy from the back tonight in, a, in, our, in our Volvo when we drive into town? And the mom's like, you know it. And then you see <laughs> the dummies like, carrying things in the background down the hallway. I feel like it's pretty in line with the mom's peripheral. Like, I'm really surprised no one didn't see it there, but well, what are you supposed to do? So we cut tonight and pretty much almost immediately we can get to see the dad munching on the mom's pussy as they drive away. But what's weird during this part is that it's a still image, yet they use the version of it that's the mask and not just the puppet. So I was really confused by that. It almost looks like a new character in the window. When I was watching it, I was like, wait, who is that? Oh, it's Slappy, okay. And the kids are upstairs and they're playing like some old, old person game. And they're saying they're gonna stay up all night and watch movies. But when Trina goes downstairs, she finds some dolls that are swinging on some fans and a doll that's in the cooler. And she calls down Zane and she says, Zane, Zane. And the kids come downstairs and Zane's like, this isn't even physically possible to put the doll in the cooler. While they're talking about that, you hear a little rustle. They turn back around. Guess who's on the table? Slappy. But what's kind of weird is we start getting into the editing problem. Because when you first see it, it's definitely the person trying to be still. They're kind of slightly moving with the mask. And then every time they do a cut in, it's the actual puppet. You almost think there's like an, an additional character in the scene because they keep cutting back and forth between each other. Do you think it would be better if they just had the kid in the costume? That you have to, I think you either have to go one way or the other, right? Like it feels weird to keep cutting back and forth or just use the kid for like running shots and never show the front of him. The editing is so jarring though. The amount of cuts you do and the amount of like drastically stylized changes makes it super, super jarring. So Hayden Christensen's like, here, look, I'll see if he wants to kick him. And he just immediately goes down and like shows his ass to Slappy. <laughs> he's like, kick me, Slappy, buddy old pal. And he's like, I dare you. And uh, Slappy does, Slappy kicks him in the ass and he starts uh, chasing the kids around. He trips them on a rug, but they just tackle him because once again, in this series, children forget that they can overpower a toy or a hollow puppet. They roll him up in a rug and shove some like panties in his mouth. They put him in his chest and throw him down the well. Quiet. And they're like, well, crisis averted. And they kind of awkwardly go back inside. So. I guess we should just go to bed, right? Right. All right, good night. <laughs> so, uh, I guess nobody wants to watch the monster movie marathon anymore. Well, you guys aren't gonna like talk about how weird it is that a puppet came to life? Like, are, is no one curious? Is it... I guess not. What's crazy to me is that in these Goosebumps things, no one ever tries to reach out to anybody. Like even 911 or anything. These also work well because you don't have cell phones and stuff like that. Also, kids are pretty dumb. Usually, even back in the day, my mom would be like, hey, I left a phone number on the fridge if you need to call anybody. It's never that. They're just like, well, that happened. Okay, good night. You're not, that, that's it? Okay, I guess period to the night. See you guys. Like, it just feels so fucking weird. Slappy does get out of the well. And like while the sister's sleeping, she wakes up and Slappy like throws up a frog and he goes, a frog in my throat, ah! Trina starts screaming. Daniel comes in with a bat, Slappy's gone. And you see that he's going into the air vent. He goes into Zane's room. He like, says some creepy shit. He's like, so, you wanna be just like me? so you wanna take pictures of Aunt Patty's pussy? Upload them to the newly found interwebs, do you Zane? 
So then he crawls into, which even I gotta say it was kind of graphic if I'm being honest, crawls onto the bed with Zane, like mounts over him. It starts like queefing in his face and like it goes into the kid's nostrils. I mean, the greatest guy was like, this is kind of explicit. This is, well, you know, I, I, felt, I felt a little uncomfy watching it for a second. So the kids are like, Zane, oh my God, he's in Zane's room. And they run into Zane's room and uh, Slappy's in there and he turns Zane around and Zane has been transformed into a puppet. It's pretty horrifying, actually, if you think about it. You're like, oh my god, you know, how you process that. And he like turns him around, he says a joke. Hey, did you hear the one about the three kids that tried to outsmart my dummy? Aiden Christensen in the vocal booth. No, Slappy, tell me all about it. They don't. Ah! And they laugh, and then the kids run off because in all these books and, and, and a lot of the Goosebumps stuff, the kids can just run away and like kind of reevaluate and reassess, and the evil entities just kind of hang out in the house, and they're just like, nah. They go back to the well and they are like, oh, let's get the card and we'll say the spell again. And that will exercise him out of the doll's body, I guess. The chest they pull out of the well is completely dry, even though earlier we hear it hit water. I know that I'm just, I'm being nitpicky, but they even open it and there's no water inside the chest. It's bone dry, it doesn't matter. I just want to say I was complaining about that. They're like, well, Slappy probably still has it on him. They go back in the house and climb up the attic and all the dolls are sitting there. I can't remember, I think Daniel says, I think they're sleeping. Do dummies sleep quiet? It's like they're puppets. They're puppets and all their eyes are open. Why would you just assume that? Just because they're sitting quietly? Do you not think that this is a trap, Daniel, you idiot? But they see the card, the Slappy wakes up, the girl slaps the shit out of him. Which once again, it's like they tussle and you find out that yes, a human child can overpower a puppet. I've fallen and I can't get up. We, we, we keep coming to this conclusion and they don't just like rush him, kick his ass. Which also it's like, even if he did do the queef dust in your face, I feel like you could just like hold your breath or just like run away from it for a second and then come back and scissor kick him. They tussle around for a bit and she grabs the card and she reads the curse again and Slappy does ah and falls to the floor. Rocky does kind of like a weird like, oh, and falls to the floor as well. But it's like a couple seconds afterward. So it feels very obvious that even he didn't know what the was going on there. He's like, oh, I should probably fall down too. So they, they're sitting there and they're defeated and they're like, it worked! Oh, nope, psych, they get back up and they're just like, haha, we were just tricking you, that was acting. And this is another thing that Slappy says too, he says it in the second book, is Night of Limb Dummy 2. He says, you all are my slaves. You are my slaves. He's very interested in making sure that the children know that you all are my slaves, meh. Rocky starts to laugh with Slappy and he goes, quiet you, who said you could laugh? I'm in charge here, meh. And uh, the girl's basically like, hey Rocky, you know that you're my favorite, my dad's favorite puppet, right? He used to take you everywhere. Rocky, you don't need to be anybody's slave. Oh. And Rocky looks around, he looks like he's experiencing life for the first time, which makes sense since he's a puppet, but it's just, there's like not a thought going on behind those eyes. Like, and with his voice, <laughs> it just makes him see, so, seem so mentally unwell. But anyways, he's like, you're right. And he starts tussling with uh, Slappy. And he keeps saying shit like, never disrespect the family. Never go against the family. And he, he, there's a lot of interesting sound effects too. He's like, all right. All right. Ugh. Tackling him and stuff, and they drape what is it? Pretty much a non-weight, like a weightless puppet over his shoulder. Throws him out the window, and Slappy holds on to the gutter. Right? He's holding onto the gutter outside the house on the on this uh, roof. It's so epic. Oh god, it's so good. He leans back up with the regular puppet. He does. Don't you get it? I'm invincible. A bolt of lightning doesn't hit Slappy. All right. It hits the house, the, a metal point on the tip of the house, travels all the way down the gutter system, and then it gets to Slappy and he explodes. <laughs> and his scream is like reverberated and echoed, so he's like, ah! And he gets some like cool like MTV headbangers ball, like his face is burning on the ground. He's like, Ugh. It cuts to the next day. The parents, I don't even think, know what happened. We really actually liked having you around. We thought you were a pussy. Idiot, but actually we like you a lot. He's like, oh, 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 oh. well, maybe next time you can come to my house. Maybe next time you could come over to my house. Yeah, we'd like that. that See you, Zane. Yeah. And as he's walking in, his head does a full 180 and he does, I'll be seeing you real soon, cousins. The dad is right there. So I feel like, why would you be like, his head, his head. And the dad would be like, oh my, oh my God, Zane. No, the, the, the dad's just like, 
everything's normal here. And uh, his head turns back around and gets in. Which, to be fair, that, that being the ending, and then it cuts, and it's some interesting little wind chimes again, like, the terror still continues. It's pretty f rad. And of course, you cut back to R.L. Stein. Did you like that? Well, I hope you have a good resty evening, everybody. And then his hands go up, and the voice goes, I'm a spooky baby. His little puppet does like a very pedophile kind of <laughs> laugh. I don't know. I had no other way of describing it. And that's the story. It's weird to think that this is, that he is the face of the, the franchise. I still think that like the Haunted Mask is probably the, the, the best one in terms of like stories. I mean, you know, you know me, dude. Stay out of the basement. That's my game. Werewolf of Fever Swamp. That's my jam. Haunted Mask, probably legitimately the creepiest one with the best story. But even this one has its own charm. It's interesting to, th to think that he is like the spokesperson. He is the face of the series. Even in like remakes and adaptations, he's always like kind of a central figure in all of them, which is just kind of odd. I don't know. It's a very simple idea, but rem remember just being very afraid of this episode as a kid. Even the set, like the giant house and everything, the well, there's, it's just all these little intricacies that are very nice. And I just, I really don't think that you can beat the practicals of it too. Of just like the puppets and stuff. And even their extremely pathetic attempt of like making him more mobile. Night of the Living Dummy 2 where he was very stationary and it was kind of awkward because he never really seemed that threatening. But at least in this one, they had a child or a little person running around as him and they, you know, they gave it a good college try. So for a 90s piece of schlock and a little piece of nostalgia, I think it's fun. It kind of takes me back to like the Scholastic Book Fair and stuff, so it's always a good time. I love Goosebumps, dude. I'll never stop talking about Goosebumps. I love it. I'll have to, we'll have, we'll have to do the Haunted Mask sometime. What about the new 2023 series on Hulu? That was terrible. Oh. With Justin Long. I remember they kept using all those promotional uh, commercials with Justin Long and he keeps like looking up like with a Kubrick stare smile. So cringy. And I forgot what song they played with it. Do you remember what song? I get the goosebumps every time. Oh my Three god, it, that's what it was. It was the Travis. You're right. It was the Travis Scott one. I get those goosebumps every time. What does he say? I hit the high man. Is that what he says? I hit the. Why did I say like I hit the high man? That's why I do, dude. When I'm getting balls deep, I hit the high man. <laughs> Whatever, dude. All right, bye, everybody. No thanks. I'm allergic to monster blood. <laughs> oh, sweet. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, that would make a lovely centerpiece. <laughs> oh, nothing like rats and sauerkraut. Huh? No, you know, I, I usually don't kiss giant hamsters on the first date. Huh.